Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to get all the tickers using TD Ameritrade's API, along with fundamental data for those tickers. So here are some of the packages we're going to require. You're going to have to put in your API key and we start off by assigning letters. So how this is going to work is we're gonna do a lookup, but in order to do so, we need some sort of character or symbol. So I'm just gonna pass in the letters of the alphabet A through Z, and I'm going to get all the tickers that begin with that letter. So if we run that line, we have essentially stored in all the letters in this alpha variable. So I wrote in a function that will pass in the letter. I'm going to assign my API key along with the letter and create a URL. I will then pass in that URL and read in the data. And then I'll row bind all the tickers together and return it as a table. So if we go ahead and run this function, I will then use PBL apply, pass in all the letters of the alphabet as a list to the function we just created. So I'll go ahead and run that line and the process should take about 20 seconds or so. All right, so then we will put everything together using our bind list. And if we take a look at our table, so we got 33,500 different symbols along with the QSIP, symbol, description, exchange, and asset type. For asset type, there is equity, ETFs, and indices. But I believe for indices, we have to pass in a special character such as a dollar sign in order for us to retrieve the S&P or NASDAQ, but I haven't actually tried it because I just wanted to get equities and ETFs. So if we go back to our script, so the following line just saves it as an RDS file so that you don't have to rerun this, but I'm not gonna actually run this because I already saved it. But in order to call it back in, we can just use read RDS, pass in the name of the file. So I'll leave that in there just in case. All right, so if we scroll down the script, we will use unique to get rid of any duplicates. I will then subset equity and ETFs. So then I created another function to pull fundamental data using this API. So essentially the same thing, just pass in the URL, read in the data. We're gonna row bind, convert it as a data frame, change the column names, and then combine the ticker data with the fundamental data. So I'll go ahead and run this function All right, so since there's a rate limit for this API, it's currently at 120 requests per minute. So I'm just gonna use modulus every time we hit the rate limit. So if we hit the rate limit, I'm just gonna put the system to sleep for a minute, and then it's gonna continue picking up where I left off. So that's what this line does. We are passing in the tickers, and then I have this line in case it cannot find the fundamental data for a specific ticker, it won't break and we have to start all over. So this will just handle any errors we get by pulling fundamental data. So for this example, I'm just going to request fundamental data for 10 tickers. So if we run this block, if you're passing in all the tickers, this might take a while. I think it took over three hours or four hours to pull in all the fundamental data for the equities, just because we have to continue putting the system to sleep due to the rate limit. So once that's done running, I'm gonna extract complete cases, and then I'm gonna row bind using our bind list. And if we take a look at that data frame, this is what the data looks like. So we have the symbol, the 52 week high, the 52 week low. We have the dividend amount, if any, dividend yield, dividend date, some nice ratios from the financials. So there's a total of 59 different columns that we can extract using this API. So we can use this data for filters. If you're developing an algorithm and need some certain criteria, we can definitely use this API to get some nice fundamentals for each ticker. So let's take a look at the fundamentals for ETFs. So this last line saves all the equity fundamentals as an RDS file, which you can later call back in using read RDS. All right, so for the ETFs, we're gonna use the same approach. We're gonna put the system into sleep every 120th iteration. We're gonna get the fundamental data, check if there's any errors. If there isn't, then just return the fundamental data. So I'll go ahead and run the first 10. I'll then extract all the complete cases. I'm gonna row bind all the data and then save it as an RDS file so that I can look at it later. But we'll take a look at the ETF fundamentals. All right, so for ETFs, we got 51 columns. Just note that some of the values may be empty, such as the financials, since these are ETFs, but we get a nice table with data that we can use to later filter out any ETFs that we want to backtest. So the purpose of pulling in the tickers and fundamental data is to get filters for ETFs and stocks along with a tradable universe of 
what tickers we can trade, which we can later use for our backtest or any algos that we're working on. So I'll go ahead and post this script on GitHub and I'll leave the link down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.